Okay. So therefore, the pupils of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai, who these people were Tanayim, they had to praise Rabbi Shimon and say, Rabbi Shimon, you are as incomprehensible to us as God is. <coughs> in order to arouse <coughs> his <coughs> teachings. Now, the, Moses, on the other hand, he did teach the people, but it was, he was ordered by God to do it. And Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was not ordered by God. So these people, <coughs> his pupils had to arouse him. The ways they did it was by praising him. That's the similar why we praise God. Now, why compare Rabbi Shimon to God? We'll see in a second. But it's not unusual because it says also by Moshe, <clears throat> right before the splitting of the Yam Suf, Vayamiru Bahashem of Moshe Avdo. So the Jewish people believed in God and in Moshe. So the same type of <clears throat> approach <clears throat> that is necessary to connect to God. Namely, faith, emuna, was the same approach that was necessary to connect to Moshe, his servant. So it says that they believed in God and in Moshe. <clears throat> in the same sentence, it doesn't say they believed in God and they believed in Moshe. Right? They believed in God, that's one type of belief. And they believed in Moshe, and namely they followed what he said. It says they believed in God and Moshe. By Yaminu Hashem over Moshe Abdo. They believed in God and Moshe in one breath. The faith that you had to have give to God was the same faith you had to give to Moshe. It was incomprehensible. <coughs> but in Moshe's case, it was commanded by God to give over to the Jewish people. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai had to be aroused by his pupils. That's what it says in the Mamar. That's what it says in the Hasidic discourse of the fourth Rebbe of Chabad. The Indian Shivche Rashbi, that the idea of praising Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai, Yuvan, can only be understood by Shiv Choshel Mokom praising God, who Benosef Alabah Raya, this is in addition to bringing the proof, Shibichadei Lor Rashpa, Be'en Aroch, then in order to arouse a, 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 a reaction from something that is incomparable to you, you have to give praises. Right, like people praise the king so that the king will get uh, the OC, he sees the people like him, so the king will give to the people his uh, his shining countenance. Good, that that's that's a that's a, a, a that's a psychological thing. You know, if somebody who's really great, you have a little child that comes up in front of a big professor or something, oh I really love you. <clears throat> you see, sometimes it happens with people like that they're great uh, pianists and great uh, musicians. And you see the people come up to them that are st- studying. And they say, oh, you are so wonderful. You are so great. We like you so much. It makes the person, oh, he feels now. He feels happy. These people appreciate him. And he, he talks to them. He's nice to them. Right? So this is a, a general principle in psychology. You know, you want to, you go to talk to a boss of a big company or something like that. So you're nice to him. You praise him. You know, I read the article you made. I really liked it. The, you praise a person. Why did it have to compare him to God? Why did it have to say in order to... So Rabbi Shimon was incomparably greater to them. Why does it have to use incomparable? That's the reason, same reason why we praise God. Why compare Rabbi Shimon to God? Just say a psychological thing. If there's someone who's really great, you praise him, and it makes the person happy, and he gives over to you. Any great person says, yeah, like we do to God. <laughs> why throw God into it? To show you why... <clears throat> that the incomparableness, in other words, the distance between Rabbi Shimon and all the other Tanayim, these other great Sadiqim, but Dugmas is like Ha'en Aroch Nivra Laboret. It's like the distance between any creation to the Creator. Now, you have to think about what this means for a second, because the, by God, he creates everything, right? So for God to create a Jew, or to create a human being, is the same thing for God, like to create a, 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 a rock, to create a, whatever it is, an atom, or a protozoa, or whatever. Because all these things are created something from nothing. <clears throat> the way the world works, there is no such thing in the world as nothing, there's no such thing as nothing. 
Even in the vacuum, you go to the outer space, there's a vacuum. So there's a vacuum. There's space. That's something. Right? You want to say, well, what about all the spiritual worlds? Huh? There's spiritual worlds. You have these, uh, these uh, what is, uh, people meditating in the, in the Far East. They, they sit on the mountain, they think about nothing all the time. Um, says, there's, okay, the spiritual worlds are really not a thing. Right? But they're spiritual. It is a, it's a spiritual thing. Antimatter is a thing. Black holes, yeah. <laughs> no, didn't this guy uh, Hawking have a thing about the black holes and the whole world came from a black hole and it's super magnetic and that's it, right? So that's an anti something. It's a negative, but it's still something, right? It's still something. <laughs> It's like they say this, I heard the joke from, I think it was Manus Friedman, that a, a Hasid, he was caught stole stealing, or he did something wrong, and he was brought in front of a Hasidic rabbi, a, dead, right? a, a, a judge. So the judge said, what did you do? He says, listen, I learned in Hasidut that I am nothing, the world is nothing, what I stole is nothing, the person I came from is nothing, everything is nothing. So he said, okay, good. So then take this nothing, takes out a whip, Take this nothing and give 50 nothings on the back of this nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I heard this story slightly differently. This, this guy borrowed money. Oh. <laughs> he went to get the money. He said, No, he learned because it's, it's nothing. I said, Prove it to us. We'll show it we'll some show, more. We'll show what nothing really is. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> this is what it says in the Maimur Shohayu Meshav Chimoso. Okay, so what are we saying? The, com- the distance between the Tanaim and Rabbi Shimon was comparable to the distance between the creation and the creator. And it was in some way, their comparison to Rabbi Shimon was like the comparison between a rock and a human being. Or even more, a rock and God. This makes no sense, but nevertheless, it's true, and that's why they had to praise him. And that's what—that's the whole point. It doesn't make any sense. It's totally beyond comprehension. Right? It sounds a little bit sort of fantastic. I mean, you get, but on the other hand, God is affected by our prayers and our praises. <clears throat> How can we reconcile this? It says. Uh, the no lush and Nora that it says that they praised him with awesome praises. That this idea of awesome indicates on Indian on something lagamri, which is totally incomparable. Ajamatil ema until it brings fear. Until it brings fear. There's a lot of uh, the. I, I mean, I, this has never happened to me, but I. I've heard of people that somebody pulls a gun out on them and they faint. They pass out. In other words, death all of a sudden looks at them in the face and it's just so frightening. They just... That's, that's emo. That's what's called nora. Right? It's just to... A person lives his regular life, thinks, you know, <coughs> if this happens, I'll do this. What happens if I'm going to die? What am I going to do then? Where can you run? What, what are you supposed to do? Right? Death is looking at you in the face. What are you supposed to do? That's the thing of a soldier, of a soldier, a policeman. We, it's, it's hard to, you know, to, to praise these people enough because they're willing to. They, they run into a place where everybody runs away. You know, it's awesome. This is that, that's the idea of looking at Rabbi Shimon by Yochai. It's just so awesome. That's why everybody. It says everybody died at Mount Sinai. The revelation was, it was too much, too much life. It was too, too big of a change. And that's what Rabbi Shimon was. That's why they praised him in order to evoke from him these blessings. Where did they get the idea to do this? To, that there would be this reaction of, of, of God and this coming through him if they praised him. Listen, they knew who he was. Little by little, they came to, to realize who he, who he was. I mean, it's the same thing like with the Lubavitcher Rebbe. I, I have this book now with the Lubavitcher Rebbe in his early years. <clears throat> his early years, he says, even then he was different than everybody else. He was different. Even when he was young, he was like in his teens, 13 years old. His father didn't treat him like a child. He used to take advice from him. 
and there was some rabbi that came, a, a great rabbi, because there was a big turmoil in Europe in those times. It was in, in the 1914, 19. And some great rabbi came and he tested him. And he said he just doesn't, I never saw anything like that. He said the, the, the boy knows the whole entire Talmud. And with all the commentaries, he says, every word that I ask him, he just knows everything. So, but on the other hand, he was a boy. He was a boy like all the other boys. He didn't play around with everybody else. But still, he was a pure person. There was once a, a boy that was drowning. He jumped in to save him, right? It was, it was a kayak or something. He ran, swam over and jumped on and saved him. And he came out. When he came out, he almost fainted himself. He was, you know, he had... So, yeah, good. He, he was a, a very brave person, a very intelligent person, a very, a very uh, serious person, mature person. But he was a person. He was a person like everybody else. But little by little, people started to realize what was going on. And he himself started to realize what was happening. Especially the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe recognized in him that he has certain abilities. And he encouraged them and he encouraged them more and more and more. The previous Lubavitcher Rebbe was just, uh, you know... Uh, I mean, there, there were not, not enough books to, to explain huh? the greatness of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. And the, but still, he encouraged them more. So little by little, he came to be known when there were questions, when there were problems. You know, to, to, he was the only one that could solve them. He was the only one. So little by little, people started to realize, this man has a lot of answers to a lot of questions that we're asking. And the people were really interested in knowing about what's really going on in the spiritual worlds and how that relates to us. So he would have answers, and the answers would come, and they saw that the answers were, <clears throat> how do you say, they, 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 they synchronized, they fit in with his private life. They saw that he wasn't just a faker or a very intelligent person or a, you know, an expert in Kabbalah or something like that. Uh, you know, they could, uh, a, a really you know, a spiritual person that he had sense of what Kabbalistic ideas are, and he could you know, uh, throw out answers, impress people. They saw that he was really something special. And little by little, they realized that he's more special than we can possibly imagine. And, and, and even more, they started to realize this, this is something totally uncanny. There's never been anything like this before. And the ones that really appreciated it, suddenly they started realizing how awesome that this man was, that this man is. And he himself realized it. I mean, I don't know how people like that feel in, in themselves. But they... Uh, you know, somehow or other, he was integrated with all these ideas that he gave, so that he was, you know, tremendous level of, of holiness. It says in the in the Tanya, in the tenth parak of the Tanya, tenth chapter of the Tanya, that when Rabbi Chia wanted to go up to heaven, now it says about Rabbi Chia that he could bring with him with he with his sons together, they could bring the raising of the dead. It says in the Talmud. So it says that when they went. <clears throat> when when he died, Rabbi Chia died, and he wanted to go up to the chamber of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, it said, "Any you can't come in, and only those who have transformed darkness to light and bitterness to sweetness can come in here." And that you, why Rabbi Chia wasn't at level level, I have absolutely no idea because I'm tremendously far away from either one of them. I mean, I can just read barely read the, the, the Tanya, you know. But the fact of the matter is, is that you know. So there's levels of, of, uh, of integration, of, uh, of feeling godliness and expounding the ideas. You know, it's, it's just, uh, there are miraculous, it's, it's God's mercy that he puts people in the world that are like that, that, that open up our eyes. Because like I say, there's a lot of fakers, there's a lot of, uh, they say that in general, even the Arizal, that he did not give permission to his pupils to write any things down that he said. Mm -hmm. Because maybe they would get something wrong. Mm -hmm. Now the pupils of the Arizal were very, very holy and pure and genuine people. And nevertheless, he didn't give permission. I don't really understand that because there are books, there's Ema Kamelech, there's other books that are written by his pupils and they are accepted by everybody. The Rebbe used to bring <clears throat> from these different books of the of the Arizal. So exactly what the implications are, but I know that he did say that. There was such a thing that he, he said. So... I don't know, the, 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 these people in the, the true Kabbalistic world, you know, that really live in the true Kabbalistic these are just different type of people that, the, than we are. You know, I mean, genuine, we're talking about genuine, really holy 
people that their their whole interest is just to come close to God and to. But ideally, the, 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 but you have to know something that that ideally every single Jew in the world is going to be like Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. <clears throat> every single Jew will all be to, able to accept all the biggest revelations of Mount Sinai and the Holy of Holies. And the, the world will be, Israel especially, will be like the Holy of Holies. In other words, a pure truth will be revealed. Everyone will see the Creator and how important every creation is. That God is actually creating everything there is in the world. That's the ideas of Kabbalah. Do they put, they show the importance of physical things. There's a book, a very beautiful book, which is called Shari Ora by, if I remember, Rav Giktilia. You can check it up to see. I think I'll look and see. And there he takes regular terms that are appear in, especially in prayer, house, fish, river, tree, and he explains what levels of godliness this refers to. By letters, but, but not, not by the letters, by the words themselves. He doesn't do gematria or something like that. So it says, Az Yashir Moshe Uvene Israel. Az refers to inside of Keter with the seven emotions. And Yashir is referring to Bina, etc. It brings it all down. There are Kabbalists that are, I can bring, I have downstairs with Siddur of the Rashash, Rabbi Shlomo, Rabbi Shlomo Sharabi. And he was a pupil of the, of the Arizal. And he has a, a book of uh, the Sidur, it breaks up all of the words in the Sidur and shows the, the, the God, names of God which are implied by every single word and the gematrias and things like that. It takes a person three, four hours to pray, you know, when he uses a thing like that. Hasidus is a different approach than that. Hasidus is not so much with gematrias and <clears throat> but they're all genuine, you know, approaches. But nevertheless, what we're talking about is a whole different world of reality, a warm, vibrant, alive world of, of spirituality that's found in every mitzvah. The main thing is the mitzvahs, the, the mitzvahs of the Torah, God's will. So that everything becomes alive. It's not just like r- dry rituals. Well, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. It, it seems to me that this is all created by Hashem. Of course. It, it, it's already here. And all these different methods, Chassidus, Kabbalism, all these, all these rabbis and all these approaches that you always just for us to you know, fits us with the consent to help us to open our eyes so we can see what That's God right. is. To love God. To, to, to realize how precious uh, that the word God is. And, and the thing is that how precious God is to us. So we can say, what, what, who cares yeah, how, what, about, about us? We're just creations. We're nothing. God does care. He wants us to do the commandments. He wants us to fix up the world. He, he's so intimately involved. <laughs> right. He creates this. That's right. He, he's, not, he's, he's so intimately involved. He's, he's so much more involved in the world than we have any conception of. But here the Rebbe is so saying, to, that's to one see. thing. But here there's also another thing. Not only is God involved in us, he gives, he gives, he gives, but he's affected by us. We actually can affect him. Yes. Then we want to say that God is really good and he looks over us and he provides for us, you know, like a person who has a, or an ant collection or something like that, or birds, you know, he takes care of his birds. I remember I knew somebody had a hummingbird collection. There's people who love animals, so they take care of their cats. They give them, but they don't react to the cats. You know, the cat says, hey, you know, change my, you know, uh, I don't like this guy. I don't like this other cat. He's making trouble. He, he, he's good because he's good. He just gives, he gives, he gives. He doesn't want trouble. He gives to the cats. He, uh, right? He feeds his dogs. He likes his animals. He likes his, his garden. He has a garden. He feeds the garden. Doesn't it? But he doesn't react to the garden. Right? He takes care of the garden. It's something by nature. <clears throat> God wants us to inspire him. God wants us to change his mind. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is even more amazing. And one of the ways it does is by, by also by prayer, also by doing the Torah and mitzvahs, and understanding it and loving God. It's an interaction. That's the whole book of Shir Hashirim. Right. 
That's the book of Shir Hashirin, the interaction between God and the Jewish people. That God seeks us and we seek him and he loves us and we hug him and he kisses us and we kiss him and we, we're searching in the nighttime and we're wondering, where's my beloved? My beloved is, is in the garden. My beloved. Good. A love story between Jews and Hashem. Okay, we'll come back today and